Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for more than 10 years. In this video, I will tell you about sewage. What is the source of wastewater? How is it discharged? How does the sewage system work in general? And which units should be put in place to treat the wastewater discharged from a rice farm? I decided to cover this topic because many people get problems if they don't think about sewage in advance. They presume that the wastewater will somehow dissolve by itself. They guess that there will not be a large volume of wastewater and it will be possible to dump it into some well. In fact, later it turns out to be a big problem. Sometimes they finally have to apply an expensive solution or even to abandon the fish farm project. And it's just because the site was not properly selected in advance and the volume of wastewater to be discharged was not assessed. Make sure to watch this video to the end, because not only will you learn all about the drainage system of a rice farm, but also the two most effective ways to treat the effluent discharged from your fish farm. Why the sewage in a rice farm needed at all? Where does wastewater come from? It's very simple. In rest, there are filters, which require constant flushing in the process of their operation. For example, a drum filter, being regularly flushed, can discharge from 7 to 10 percent of the total water volume per day. There are also preliminary mechanical water treatment units, such as swirl filters or thin layer settling tanks, by filters and some other units, which you need to manually discharge water from, on daily basis or every few days. All this, as well as the need to change water in the system to maintain nitrate concentrations within the normal range, gives this concentrated effluent, which you need to discharge. Let's go over it again. Where does wastewater come from? First of all, these are drum filters. You hear, the filters are probably being flushed now. A flushing pump is triggered every 5 to 10 minutes to flush the drum filter mesh of impurities. Under high pressure, water fed to the nozzles discharges all these dirt, suspended solids, into the drainage system. This is already a large volume of wastewater that needs to be treated. There are also biofilters. You also need to dump sediment from the bottom of the biofilters. There are preliminary water treatment units that clean the water from coarse suspended solids. The sediment is also discharged from them once a day every few days. All this is basically water mixed with feces, remains of an eaten feed, such muddy, but not very bad smelling water, which must be treated before discharging. For example, we are now at African catfish farm. Its capacity is about 30 tons of grout fish per year. The tank's volume is 55-60 cubic meters. And from this farm, 5 to 10 cubic meters of water are discharged every day. In this case, wastewater is discharged into the central sewage system. I will probably start with this method. So, the first treatment option, the first discharge option, is using the central sewage. If you already have a central sewage system connected to your farm or to the plot where you are going to locate it, then you only need to get the approval on the volume and composition of the discharged effluent with the regulatory authority. And then you can discharge it directly into the sewage system without any treatment. That way you simply pay for using the central sewage and you won't need to treat the wastewater on your own. Well, those were the advantages of central search. Now let's talk about the disadvantages. Firstly, you are likely to pay for every cubic meter of the discharged water. It's important to understand that this will affect the fish prime cost, albeit not significantly. So let's proceed with the calculation. Imagine you have a sturgeon farm for 10 tons of grout fish per year. The volume of wastewater will make 300 liters per kilo of farmed fish, so you get 3,000 cubic meters of wastewater per year. The average wastewater discharge and treatment tariff in my country is about 0.5 US dollars per cubic meter. Multiply that by 3,000 cubic meters, and you get 1,500 US dollars per year, or 125 US dollars per month. This is just example of calculation. You can take your own figures. There are situations when public utility providers start being capricious that there is something wrong with the wastewater you discharge. You discharge too much. The wastewater is of the wrong composition. So be careful. Central search system is a good thing, but it's important to check some nuances. The second option. Imagine that you have a plot far out in the countryside. There is not even a central search system close by. 
but you want to build a fish farm and somehow resolve the issue. There is only one option to discharge untreated wastewater from the farm. This is in case you have a pond on the territory of your site. If you discharge wastewater into this pond, the pond itself serves as a wastewater treatment facility, which treated wastewater then flows out from. But it's important to understand that this pond must meet certain criteria. The second option is when you need to treat the water before discharging it. If you have a site, there is no open water body on the site, you will not be allowed to discharge effluent of the site without proper treatment. This is the requirement of the environmentalists, as it's not possible to discharge wastewater into an open water body if it doesn't meet certain parameters and criteria. And the wastewater from the fish farm, even if it doesn't contain any chemicals, doesn't meet these criteria as the organic substances contained in the water simply exceed the normal range. And so, if you discharge untreated wastewater outside your plot, you are likely to receive fines from the environmentalists. It will happen sooner or later. That's why it's advisable to install a proper sewage treatment plant right away. There are two options of sewage treatment plants. Which ways could you organize them? First, if you have a large site, especially if it's located somewhere in southern latitudes, a by pond is a very good option. But at the same time, it's a pond which wastewater is discharged into, and then it's purified by means of natural biological processes. Let's make it clear whether a big or small by pond is needed, and what kind of by pond should that be. Basically, a by pond is just an open pit filled with water. What parameters should it have? Firstly, it has to hold the wastewater for one month. Let's calculate. 3000 cubic meters per year for a farm of 10 tons of sturgeon divided by 12. We get a little less than 300 cubic meters, and that's the volume of wastewater per month. That means that you need the pond for 300 cubic meters. Next, the depth of the by pond. In order for the sun to penetrate into all water column and for photosynthesis processes to take place properly, you need to keep the depth no more than 1.5 meters. This means that we divide 300 by 1.5 meters and get 200 square meters. This is the average area of that by pond, which would be needed for a farm with the capacity of 10 tons of sturgeon per year. Is it a lot or a little? In principle, it's not much, but if you have a shortage of space, of course, it can be a problem, especially at large farms with 10 of times larger wastewater volume. That's where a by pond solution is always under question. That is, whether or not it can be located on the side and fit into the existing area. And the second important issue is that in a warm climate, the by pond performs well. But it's not always the case in cold climate of northern countries. Because the lower the temperature is, the slower the metabolic processes of the natural microorganisms are. Thus, there is a possibility and a risk that in winter the wastewater will not be completely treated and purified. And also, environmentalists may address you with the question. Guys, what's going on? The second option. If you don't have enough area, it's also a good option for severe northern climate, when a by pond simply won't do in winter. This is a local sewage treatment plant. What is it? It's equipment that is buried into the soil of your site. It's much more compact than a by pond. There is a whole set of treatment mechanisms. Mechanical biological disinfection. At the inlet, waste water from your farm. At the outlet, completely treated water. The cost of such units may vary depending on the capacity. Nevertheless, it's a very good solution if you simply don't have any other option. A by pond or central sewage system. This equipment is called local sewage treatment plant. In other simple words, a septic tank. So, if you've heard something about septic tanks and understand what they are and look like, be sure to press the like button. The last and the most interesting thing, which many starting farmers don't take into account. After you've treated the water, it's clean, but it's still there. You have a large volume of purified water that you need to discharge somewhere. And that's where the main nuance lies. Your site must either have an adjacent open water body, such as a river, a lake, etc., where a pipe discharging treated wastewater can be laid to. Or at the very least, you must have a change in topography, such as a ravine, stormwater ditch, or something else, where you could also lay pipe to and discharge the wastewater, so that this water follows further into some open water body. 
there is also one more important point. I'm not just talking about the topography of the site or open water bodies, where you can dump your wastewater. If you don't have one and you have neighbor's sites adjacent to yours or a rod, for example, think about it in advance. Maybe you simply have no alternative to discharge your wastewater too. This is a good reason to make a detailed assessment of your land and to see if it's technically possible to discharge the water this or that way. This is Anton Pelcher. Press the like button. Subscribe to my channel, the channel on how to grow fish and make good money from it.